Before I actually went in and got my tongue split, I spent the better part of six months researching the anatomy of the tongue, other operations that are done on the tongue, looking for any way that I thought I could figure out how to make it work. And one of the key procedures that I found was a procedure that's rarely done, but sometimes done on people with tongues that are too wide. Sometimes happens with Down syndrome, uh, Down syndrome patients. They cut a key-shaped piece out of the tongue and then sew it back together to make it narrower to prevent them from gnawing on the outer edges of the tongue. So that was a really big find, that, because that meant that we could do that, remove that piece, or even better, just, and ultimately we didn't remove the piece in consultation with the surgeon. I brought up that procedure and he said, well, we don't have to take the piece out because we're not trying to narrow it. We can just divide it in half and then suture the inside apart to keep it apart rather than putting it back together. And that should work, and hence tongue splitting exists. My, my teeth were actually very simple. Uh, the dentist x-rayed my teeth to make sure they were healthy and strong. And also to get, and get a map of how deep the enamel was in various places where he would be filing off. Then I sat down in the chair and he started filing and I had a mirror where I could see what he was doing. And he was like, like that, like this, like that, you know, it's sharp enough. And uh, it took only took about 15, 20 minutes. All I felt was a little bit of vibration. Out, ready to go. No healing, no aftercare, nothing. Absolute favorite book of all time. It's a book that you know, basically changed my life when I was a teenager. Was the Illuminatus trilogy by Robert Anton Wilson and Robert Shea. Uh, ever since I first read that book when I was about 15, 16 years old, I've read it at least once a year since then. It's a it's a huge influence on me. It's a huge tome when you get all three books. It's hard to break down into it. It's a metaphor. It references uh, James Joyce's work. It's about uh, the subgenius, the Discordians, the Eregians. It's a uh, yeah, it's not the sort of thing you can sound by down. It's a, it's a very intense and very dense novel. Uh, dead or alive? Uh, dead for me would definitely be The Great Omi. Great Omi is a huge influence on me. You can see it just by looking at my modifications. Stretched septum, stretched ears, sharp teeth, full body tattoo. Yeah, that, that pretty much describes me and Omi both, except for his. The reason he's so interesting to me is not only as a, as a tattoo man, a figure in that history that I am part of, that tradition, but he chose something that was completely outlandish at that point. Non-representational art was not very well developed in the Western world at that point, and he has a non-representational tattoo over his entire body, these broad stripes and designs. It's really, really amazing, and artistically, like a huge departure from everything that had been done before, and that's part of why he was so successful, was that he was so different than any other tattooed man.